You're listening to The Gutsy Podcast, where we talk about all things real, raw, and ridiculous about running a business authentically. I'm Laura Wallace, also known as the Laura Aura, lover of all things inspirational, owner of Works Graphic Design, and your host on this journey through entrepreneurship. I'm here to help you get out of your head and back into action as a passionate business rock star. Tune in every Tuesday and Thursday as we fuel your gutsy. The way that you dress and present yourself is often associated with you, your business, and your brand. Whether it's super casual or ball gown attire, there's always a way for you to stay authentic within who you are. Today, we're talking about how presenting, carrying, and dressing yourself for success is such a huge part of your personal brand. Today, I have our very own Kristen Holt from Works & Company. She's our creative growth expert and personal image stylist. She works passionately at enhancing relationships and providing creative solutions. And when she's not at work, she's spending time with her two beautiful girls and is always out creating the latest fashion trends. Welcome to the Gutsy Podcast, Kristen. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Absolutely. So first of all, tell me what personal image styling is for those of us who may or may not know. Uh, Well, it took me a couple of years to, to really realize myself what it was, but Um, in the professional setting, I think I always pushed the limit and people would say to me, you know, you dress like that at work or that's so business, but I still see your personal style shining through. And that started to make me realize that personal image styling, when most people think of it, they think of, oh, you know, personal styling celebrities or artists or musicians or things like that. But For me, it was personal styling myself first um, because I believe how you look is how you feel and that's how you present yourself as well. So um, it really translates into being confident about who you are and where you're trying to go and how you're presenting yourself when you go to those individual places. Mm, That's amazing. So how did you first get into styling? I know that you said that this has kind of evolved over the years, but... What's maybe one of your earlier memories of when you realized that style was part of your life? Uh, I remember being in the third grade and someone called me Punky Brewster. (laughs) And I actually loved Punky Brewster, so it was a compliment. Um, But back in the 90s, early 90s, uh, people would relate it to, oh my, who's that dressed like that? Oh, that's weird. But for me, it always came natural. I just knew what to pair with what. I had an eye for color. I had an eye for pushing my personal fashion to the edge, even in the third grade. I know a lot of us remember the stirrup pants and the slouch socks and the patent leather tie shoes. I had all of it, but then I would push it to the limit and put in different color shoestrings and um, off the shoulder shoulder pads because we believe that you could still see our shoulder through it. So Uh, My fondest memories and earliest memories are in the third grade, and that's when people really started to um, kind of understand who I was because every day I was different, and I loved it, and I still dress the same today. Every day I'm different. I get to be a different version of Kristen, and I love that. Mm, That's super exciting, and I love those early memories because it just takes you back to a place, and it's just funny how who you were as a child how that has transpired into who you are as an adult today. So I would imagine being the very creative dresser that you are, that you've probably run into a couple of roadblocks along the way. So um, how did you, I mean, I'm going to, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say, you've probably been made fun of called names. What are you doing? Uh, All of the above. (laughs) Um, So, you know, I heard this term growing up. Well, probably it started in about middle school oh, she's bougie. Oh, she's really rich. Even though I was middle class, you know, (laughs) my parents lived paycheck to paycheck. And I began to internalize that in a very uh, negative way. Um, I always got, oh my God, you're wearing neon pants. What are you thinking? But I would pair it with something like a burgundy shirt. Yes, even back in the 90s, I would pair it with a burgundy (laughs) shirt. And then I had, it was almost like 
a certain percentage of people like, oh my God, I love that. I would never think to do that. But there was more percentage of people saying, what are you doing? What are you thinking? Why are you dressing like that? You know, are you crazy? Are you okay? And uh, growing up elementary, middle school, uh, even into early high school, I internalized that, um, but never changed my style. So I think a lot of times we do that. We internalize what someone thinks about us. Some of us change that style to conform to society and then others rebel against it. And I think that I've always had that rebellious nature to know that I felt good in what I was wearing, um, even though it affected me emotionally, um, physically, I knew I felt good in that and I knew the message I was trying to portray in through my fashion. So I never let it affect my style, probably just my perception of how I was dressing or the emotional you know, outcome that comes from that. Hmm. I think it's really interesting that you didn't allow it to affect the way, like you kept dressing that way. I did. Tell me a little bit about what was going on though on the inside, because you know, on the outside, you felt good. You knew this is who I am, but on the inside, that's where I think probably more of the challenge comes. Oh yeah. Um, again, every day I would get up and I, I have an eye for it. So I would just pick it. It's almost very natural to me. I don't have to think a lot about what I'm putting on. And so I would pull it out and I would wear it. And then as soon as I would get to school, somebody would be like, what are you doing? What is that? And I would internalize it, go in the bathroom and cry, mm. get home from school, take it all off and put on a plain colored sweatsuit. <clears throat> there was more of me that wanted to rebel against it. And I think that was the fighter in me saying, this is who I am. This is who I am. But the other half of me inside was going, is this who I am? You, you begin to self-doubt. Is what Jackie is saying right? Or Joe or... Brandon, do they get me? Do they know me? It wasn't until um, probably mid-high school that I started to really embrace who I was and not let any of those things be internalized anymore. Hmm. So then how did that, let's fast forward that to adulthood and um, really into your career. So how did that start showing up and playing into your career path as a, as a woman? Well, honestly, um, probably from an early age, I knew I wanted to be a stylist. It was, it's been a dream of mine, actually. And not until adulthood did I realize that it's actually a dream come true. So I remember sitting across from, from someone and they said to me, I want to dress like you. Can you help me look like you? And I realized something, even though I took that as a great compliment, for once they were saying they wanted to look like me and not what am I doing. Mm. And then I took it a step further and realized they didn't want to look like me. They just wanted to have the confidence I had in being me and putting what I wanted on my body to create my image. So that's when I realized that this personal styling thing, right, that I've always wanted to do could actually be sustainable and I could do it for a living. Um, so I think that, you know, coming into adulthood, becoming more confident in myself um, and how I dress and why I dress the way that I do um, really can help translate into my clients. Because what I've realized is they're actually looking for confidence not really a style change. They're just looking for confidence in themselves. And when they reach out to me and say, I want to look like you, I want to help them look like them. Hmm. I love it. It's, man, we all know that when you're wearing a good outfit or those jeans just fit oh so right, yes. or like <laughs> your blazers press the right way, or hell, you've got those warm sweatpants that came out of the dryer, whatever the hell it is that yes. you're wearing. The difference in the mindset that it can create, like you just, you work differently, you carry yourself differently. And then I think that people around you notice that. So tell me a little bit more just behind the power of authentically dressing like yourself. Oh, there's definite power in it. Um, I will say that 100%. Um, I think the power in it more so is that you had the confidence 
to wear what you felt good in and what looked right to you without the judgment of anyone else. So people are going to judge, right? They do it every single day. We do it intentionally, non-intentionally, but having that 100% confidence behind you, there is power in that because you're not allowing anybody else to affect how you want to look and feel and how you want to present yourself to others. Mm, It's amazing. So I know a lot of people, especially in the professional world, they say, well, I'm limited by my industry. I can only dress like this because that's what my industry says. So what are some tips that you have on, because there are certain, right? There are certain um, Absolutely. career paths that just have generalized limitations. I'm also, you know, I'm a risk taker by nature. So I'm all about pushing the envelope as well. But how, do, how can people incorporate their own personal style into their career path or whatever they're doing in life that may have limitations? Um, I can definitely relate there. Uh, I've worked in corporate America. I've worked in non-corporate America. And I still stay true to my style. Now, I think you hit it right on the head when you said risk taker. So you have to be willing to be a risk taker, right? For your own personal style. But I, I get it, right? In corporate America, if they say to you, you need to have on a pantsuit, um, heels, you know, a blazer, a jacket. I've never met a corporate America that says what color it has to be unless you're at a certain meeting and then I understand. But um, I always push the the limit myself with, okay, pantsuit, sheet of print heel, right? Scarf to match. They're not saying anything that I can wear a hat or I can't. Hats are my thing, but um, I push the limit that way. Infusing colors in. Um, if you have a black pants suit and but you love fuchsia, wear a fuchsia blouse underneath. That is how you push yourself to that limit of, I know I have to wear this pants suit and it's really boring, but I really want to look and feel amazing. Incorporate those colors that you love. Incorporate the patterns that you love. There are no restrictions on that. And I do believe as we keep moving forward in the decades, those restrictions will become less. So My advice is be a risk taker. And if you're not by nature, that's okay. But at least push yourself a little bit to the limit of what you're going to feel good in and look good in. Mm, I love it. I'm also thinking completely on the flip side, too, of people that are like, "Uh, style is just not my thing. I don't. You said leopard cheetah (laughs) boots and now I'm shutting down, you know, like all (laughs) systems are shutting down. So how... What kind of recommendations or how would you work with somebody that is like, you know, this is like I have the same three shirts and the same three pants and I'm just totally fine with that. What, how would you help them to embrace just exploring another part of their fashion? So I think a lot of times people will say like, I, I like these colors and I don't like these other colors because sometimes they've never even seen themselves in that color. Um, kind of like food. I will never eat sushi because <laughs> it sounds disgusting it looks disgusting but when they try it they find the ones that they like it doesn't mean they're going to like every single one of them so I would give that same advice to a client a lot of times people will come to us and say I know that I have some type of style in me or sometimes they come and say I have zero style please help girl and we begin to explore so one of the first things that i do with a client is we create a pinterest board together we collaborate together like i can quickly identify when i look at somebody just because it's natural to me what they would look good in what colors they would look good in doesn't mean that that they're going to like that color um it's also pushing them to that limit of have you ever seen yourself in this color how do you know you don't like it have you worn it So really digging deep into what their personal style is and if they don't have one, creating one together. I 100% believe in collaboration, especially when it comes to personal styling, because I'm just getting a feel for you, you're getting a feel for me, but how do we feel out your style together? How do we come to those decisions together? Well, and I think that plays into your brand as well. So whether this is, you know, I'm a working professional and just trying to spruce things up or I'm building a company and a brand. So it's kind of a perfect segue into how does your personal styling carry along with building a business and a brand? Um, I 100% believe that's consistency. 
right? So we create brands here that are consistent and cohesive so that you're able not only to see profit from that, but to be able to put something reputable out. So I do the same thing with style. It doesn't mean you have to wear your logo colors all day, every day, but really incorporating the look and feel, right? So if your brand makes people feel happy, excited, joyful, then when we're talking personal style, how do you want people to feel about you as a leader? How do you want them to feel about you when they come into your conference room? So I really base it off of how are you feeling about your brand? How do you feel about yourself? A lot of times we'll find a disconnect in there. Well, my brand looks like this, but I'm feeling like this. And it's because you're dressing not the way that your brand is portraying. Mm, so there's a brand disconnect in there. Yes. So what we what we really want to do is align those two things. Absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking back to the our photo shoot that we had here at Works and yes. Company a couple of months ago and how that how the photos are such a heavy part of our visual brand. And within the photos are the style of each individual woman that is individual to herself, but as a whole gives a, gives a feeling. It was very effortless for us. Um, and, and I knew it would be because we're all very fashionable in here, by the way. But um, it was very effortless because we, and you support this, but we stay very true to who we are in our fashion. And in doing so, um, I don't even think that we talked color scheme. And we all showed up that day just coordinated in the most beautiful way. And I think that goes back to we know how we want our brand to make people feel. We identified that prior to setting this photo shoot. So once we knew how we wanted people to feel, we stayed true to ourselves. We incorporated the things that we loved, that we felt good in. And then we were able to um, portray that confidence through those pictures. And you definitely said it correct. Without strong photos of your brand, of yourself, of your team, there will always be a brand disconnect with your personal style. I believe that personal style along with branding really ties everything back together. Agreed. Whether that's company shirts, whether that is how you look and feel as a leader, as an artist, as a musician, um, it brings it all back together. So everything is very cohesive and consistent. Well, it's down to the details too, right? So if we're thinking about photos, you know, everyone's a photographer today. We all have access to portrait mode on our iPhones yes. and, you know, we can do some pretty magical things. But I think that there, if there's something really important here in investing in really good photos, especially of yourself and your team, if that's part of your branding. But at the bare minimum, at least having some really great headshots. So... Also, I just want to say, like, gone are the days of classic headshots. Yes. Like, you can't see me right now, but I'm air quoting, like, headshots. Yes. You know, we don't need to get the, the, the mirrors and, the, and the, the navy blue background involved. So, the wicker chairs. The, yeah, you know, we can all see it right now. <laughs> so how does personal styling play into also the style of the photography that goes into the branding? So I think it portrays a lot in color scheme. Um in how you're looking, where you're standing, how you're sitting, um, how your face is facing. Um, there are a lot of times in creatively directing too. Um, I take it a little further. I go a little beyond the styling, but um, I come alive. I come alive when I style and I come alive when I creatively direct a photo shoot. And that's because having that eye for what you're supposed to wear, what color, how you're standing in that color. It's the details, you know, again, the details of every single position and color that you're wearing ties back to that photo shoot. Without that photo shoot, um, you can't deliver consistency. And, you know, we've said it a lot during here, details, consistency, color fusing, but it's really to create something that with longevity and personal style evolves, brands evolve. And if your style has been stagnant for years, not only is your, your style stagnant, your brand could be stagnant, your life could be stagnant. 
Um, I'm a believer in evolving, evolving that look and evolving how it ties back into the brand. Yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking too, when you were talking about that, about um, industries and expectations of style. Now that's different than like actual limitations versus, oh, I'm, I, let's, I'm going to use a lawyer as an example. Okay. A lawyer may at one point be perceived as like high end and I need to dress a certain way and I have to have this kind of suit and I have to have, I, my headshot has to be behind the, the cherry desk yes. with the leather chair and like the law books the, behind. The law books behind. I mean, again, <laughs> another picture and like, that's what lawyers do. So I want to dig into re-encouraging people that, you know, you could be a lawyer and actually be the most... I'm going to use Matt the lawyer as an example, the most, yeah. the least lawyery lawyer that we know. Um, or you could be a female in the industry and you just kind of, you, you can create your own brand style. I am 100% advocate for creating your own brand style. In fact, it's what I encourage most of my clients to do. Really push that envelope back and say, this is who I want to be. This is how I want to feel. And this is how I want other people to feel about me. And again, it's not conforming to what society says that you're supposed to look like. And you're right. If there are corporate places with limitations, that's one thing. But push, pushing yourself, knowing that, hey, I want to be a doctor and I want to wear tie-dye Crocs, <laughs> that's okay. And in fact, in most cases, it makes you stand out because you're being your authentic self. And I think that if we could push more people in personal styling to truly be their authentic self, you know, a lot of times I ask the question, if you woke up tomorrow and you only had one outfit, what would it be? Ooh. And I often ask myself that I have a closet full of outfits, but <laughs> I often ask myself that if I wake up in the morning, I'll say, who do I want to be today? How do I want people to feel about me today? How do I want to feel about myself today? And then how am I going to portray that to the world? So tying it back into confidence again, it's having that confidence to push back and say, I refuse to follow what you're saying this should look like. I'm a doctor and I wear tie-dye Crocs and a tie-dye bow tie and a hat backwards and I'm still one damn good doctor. Oh, preach it, girl. That's amazing. I, I think that there's such a level of respect. You know, when people are wearing something different like that, I'm just picturing this doctor wearing this backwards hat and a tie-dye <laughs> bow tie. And, and as a patient, even, the approachability that that would give me. Or, you know, if I'm thinking that, you know, if, if it's a doctor, but he's wearing like really funky socks, but he's got on his scrubs and he's ready to go, you know, if... I'm just thinking if I'm, if I'm in the hospital and I'm in a situation where I just, I really need support, how style can play even into your approachability and how people portray you. And I think it's really inspiring, right? Because what are doctors supposed to do? They're supposed to dress like doctors. Well, what the hell does a doctor dress like? Yes. And I think that um, a lot of times with style, especially for, for kids growing up too, there's such pressure, Right. You have to have this or look like this or wear this. I encourage both of my daughters, be you, be who you are. You know, my littlest one wants to wear a bell costume every day <laughs> it, or Pennywise. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say to her, okay, it's okay. You want to wear rain boots to Target with your bell costume? It's okay because I want them to develop the mind state early that they don't have to conform what other people say that they should look like. And um, we've all been caught up in it, right? Where someone will say, where'd you get that? And they're looking at you kind of weird, but they kind of like it. Immediately, we put it back in our closet and never wear it again. Oftentimes also, what you don't think you look good in, someone else will look at you and say, that looks amazing. So again, it's oftentimes seeing yourself through a different lens and just not conforming. You know, I think for me, I'm, I'm thankful I didn't conform because I don't think that I would be as confident or free in my own personal style now and the ability to help others find that confidence and freedom. There's freedom, right? There's freedom in getting up every day and 
being who you want and dressing how you want and pushing that limit of, I have never worn fuchsia before, but here I go. And sometimes at the end of the day, you might take the shirt off and be like, this was a shitty shirt. I'm never wearing it again. And then sometimes you'll say, I'm really glad I pushed myself to that level because I got so many compliments today. I would have never thought that. Yeah. So many options too. And and I'm thinking back to a comment that you said earlier of when you were growing up and people said to, to you and to their friends, Oh, they must be rich. Yes. Oh, they, she, she, you know, lives on the other side of the tracks, so to speak, or, Oh, you have all the latest and the greatest. So you're fancy or my favorite. She must think she's better than everyone. Oh yes. I heard that too. So let's talk about that nonsense for a hot (laughs) second, because I think that sometimes it's misled that if you carry yourself well and you dress well, that you are, let, let me just say a snobby bitch. Uh, yeah, say it. Well, I think that's what bougie probably means uh, in the negative world of when people use that word. Um, I'll tell you what, if I let every person who thought I was a bougie bitch, um, then I would be, probably be sitting here naked. <laughs> so um, <laughs> um, it's a myth, everybody. It's a myth. It's not real. Um you can be exactly who you want to be and not worry what anyone else thinks. And for anybody out here right now who's like, oh my God, I'm not gonna wear cheetah shoes. I would encourage you to just try it one time. Okay, zebra, if you like, but push yourself somewhere else because there is so much negativity in the world on social media and in the media world period of you have to look like this, you have to be this. But then when you become that, right, because you listen to them, then they say, oh my God, you're such a snobby bitch. And then you say, but you told me to wear that. So it's almost contradictive, right? Because the media world's telling you, you have to have this and look like this and be this. And then as many oftentimes as we do, we click order because Somebody said we had to have it. We get it. We hate it. We wear it anyways. And then someone says, who does she think she is for putting that on? And then we end up feeling like shit because we put on the thing that society told us to put on. Well, everybody, you should feel like shit because you didn't follow your true self. And to all of the people, too, that just feel like I don't want people to think I'm all that or too much. Or I dress like this and now I'm this. Screw them. <laughs> I, amen. I just, I'm just thinking about how it's just so easy to, to just associate. Like if you are wearing something nice or you have yourself put together, there's, yes, there's absolutely a tremendous support. Like, yeah, girl, you look amazing. Or, oh my God, that guy has got his, look at the shoes that match the outfit. And that, that whole thing is, is a whole thing. Um, but just how much of a mental battle really it is. And when people are calling you out, if, if you're hearing people say, well, who does she think she is? I want to encourage everyone to remember that that is 100% of a reflection of an insecurity that they have. It has zero to do with you. Because if you feel good, you're going to perform better. And if you're performing better, you're better to be around. You're carrying yourself better. You're going to feel more fulfilled. There's just It's just the snowball effect of awesome. So I'm a huge advocate for, I don't really care how much you spend on your clothing or your shoes or your bag, as long as it's falling within your budget and it's a responsible thing to do. If you're a millionaire or not, if you're middle class or not, like you could wear Gucci or you could get the t-shirts at five and below. Yes. And you could wear both of them with the same amount of confidence. You know, I'm glad you said that, Laura, because... Um, here was an often misperception of myself. And, you know, I stated it earlier. Oh, she's rich. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've never been rich. Um, Headed there, though. (laughs) Um, No matter where I was at, Kmart, Walmart, thrift store, Payless, I have been in Gucci. I have been in Louis Vuitton. 
I have owned something that cost a lot of money and there was no difference in how I felt in both. And that's when I started to realize it doesn't matter how much I spend on it. It's about me. It's about how I feel in it. And many times I put together something, actually 90% of the time, that did come from consignment shops. And I'm very proud to say that actually, because um, not only have I saved money throughout the years, (laughs) but I also looked really good doing it. And most of the compliments that I have received have been from an outfit that's 90% from a consignment shop. And let's talk about that for a second, recycled fashion. I believe in recycled fashion to the T. Um, Are there new lovely pieces that come out at New York and Company and Gucci and all of those places that I love as well? Yes, but I'm able to spend within my limits and still look fabulous and still feel as confident as the woman who would wear a Gucci book bag and I'm wearing one from Target. I'm still as confident as her. And I think that's really important to to say as we move forward in life and for anybody who is struggling with their personal style or does feel like, oh my God, I don't even have the money to invest in my own style. You do, you have it. It's where are you going and being strategic about what you're looking for. What pieces do you want to incorporate into your fashion? I am all about staple pieces. We talk about it a lot here. That blazer that you love that you can that you know you can wear multiple shirts with. Right. I believe in those staple pieces. In fact, that is something that I line up with my clients when we start creating those boards understanding each other's fashion, understanding the collaboration, then kind of phase two goes into what do you need to be successful every day? Is there a staple piece that you need to have? Okay, great. How many shirts can you coordinate with that one piece? Because when you start to create those staple pieces, the other things become secondary. And you're really able to save some money on those secondary pieces if you invest a little bit more in those staple pieces. Mm, But perfect transition because it was one of my next questions for you is is about those staple pieces so i came clothing ads pop up on my instagram and facebook all the time because you know you buy stalkers you buy one blazer on amazon and then the whole fashion industry knows that you want clothes so i was summoned through instagram and i came across this little like you know 60 second video or so and it's it was talking about exactly what it showed exactly what you were talking about and and it was a coat, just a really nice coat, um, fall brown, just really beautiful. But it showed how the woman was wearing it in three different ways. So she wore it to work with pumps and black slacks. She wore it with a yoga outfit to go to work out. And then she also dressed it up with jeans and like a striped shirt for date night. So that's kind of what you're talking about. It's just, yeah. you know, investing in the coat, but the other pieces... You know, I'm a huge fan. Target, I love Target. Me too. (laughs) Um, Amazon clothes are actually really phenomenal. Like, there's just really amazing resources where you don't have to break the bank. Yes. And I think that's important. Again, the perception, oh my gosh, I have to spend all this money to look great. Do you have to invest some? Absolutely. And, you know, we touched on that previously, but I think that's important to say that it's okay to invest in your personal look. If you know where you're headed and you know the direction, then it is okay to invest. So back to staple pieces, I have about 10 staple pieces um, and growing. (laughs) Um, But absolutely that blazer that you feel phenomenal in that you can pair multicolored shirts with. Absolutely those pair of pumps that will go with any meeting um, from day or night. Um, booties for fall, of course, heel booties and flat booties are staple pieces of mine. Ones that I can wear with ripped jeans, with skinny pants, with, um, sweatpants. Yes, I, I push the limit, but, um, and then I also have, um, like a great sweater, a great sweater that coordinates with anything. Um, have you seen the long vest? They're like very long past your knees. Um, and those, these are just my staple pieces. But again, I'm able to pair these staple pieces with so many things that it's almost deceiving to the eye because somebody may not know I just wore it last week with something else. That, that's, 
that's why they call them staple pieces. And if you start to incorporate those and you have a good, you know, good 10 staple pieces in your closet, again, the other things become secondary. And then, hey, next week I can pair that with that hunter green shirt or that lime shirt or, oh, maybe I can wear this, you know, tied around my neck versus on. So there's just so many ways that you can wear one piece of clothing. And I think, again, it's just, it's just pushing, the, pushing it to the edge and realizing you can. So I know that a lot of people are thinking going shopping, okay, that adds up really quickly and you know, you can get into all these things and who. So what about people that are saying, you know, I, I definitely want to up my game, but it's expensive. So how can I spruce up my current attire without breaking the bank? So I would, what the first thing I would do is, and this helped me, um, especially for those who might have a lot of clothes, (laughs) (laughs) um, really lining everything up, color coding it. How many black pieces do you have? How many green pieces do you have? How many red pieces do you have? And then begin to purge because you'll notice that some of those things you don't wear anymore. You haven't worn for years. Oh God, how long have I had this? Now, sometimes that can be beneficial because if you loved it and forgot about it, then you can say, great, I have a new shirt to wear tomorrow. Um, But for for myself, I laid everything out and said, okay, well, I haven't worn that in 10 years. Do I love it? We're big advocates here on, is it a hell yes or a hell no? And implementing that into your style. If it doesn't feel like a hell yes on, give it one more try, right? Try it on. If you look in the mirror and you're like, I don't know about this, that's usually a hell no. And get rid of it. Sell it. Um, A lot of times when I go through, I call them closet cycles. (laughs) (laughs) I purge and I either give away or I sell. And the profit that I make from selling those clothes goes right back into the place that I'm shopping for new clothes. So be very resourceful with what you have because you did invest your money into those pieces. Again, either for charity or being able to collect some money from those pieces to invest in new things. Now, let's add this to the mix. I don't have any money to get anything and I just don't know how to go in and sell these clothes. And I'm a little shy and I don't wanna do it. We hear you. That's when I encourage you to really push yourself to the edge. What do you have? What have you never worn with something else? Did you think you couldn't because that color may not go with that color? I would push push your edge. You know, look on Pinterest. Pinterest is a great resource, um, especially for um, visualization of color, color schemes, what goes with what. If you're not sure if those two colors would look well together, Go on Pinterest, look it up and say, you know, will Hunter Green go with fuchsia? And then they'll pull up a whole lineup of outfits showing you how they coordinate together. So again, push yourself to that edge. Um, Use the pieces that you already have and then start mixing things differently with them. I love that. Like literally just laying things out. I'm thinking about back in the day when we had those little paper doll outfits. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> little paper dolls yes. and you could like mix and match her shirt and pants you folded it over so it stayed with on with the little tabs yeah. and let's be real those they some, never stayed those tabs did not freaking stay <laughs> um but i love just kind of like digging everything out you know things get pushed to the back and oh I, i'm gonna wear that again and let's face it how many times have you actually wore the piece where you're like oh i'll wear that again and then you never do yeah but just literally laying it out and saying okay well here's what i would typically do Let's just cross-reference. Yes. Let's literally change this shirt and pants. Let's move these shoes over and just kind of playing like Barbie clothing dream house. Yes. It's actually amazing. And, you know, oftentimes I've turned a dress into a shirt, you know, a skirt into a top. It's, it's pretty amazing what you can do with clothes when you push yourself and you push your limits. A lot of times I hear, you know, oh my God, Kristen, you look so city today. In my mind, I'm thinking, that's exactly the look I was going for, so great. Or, you know, you look like you could be on a sports team today, and I may not even have on a jersey, but that lets me know that they perceived it as comfortable, right? Mm. Maybe that's the look I was going for. So I love what you just said about cross-referencing because 
I do that weekly. I say, oh, I, I think I wore this with this before, but what if I wore that with that? Well, and because I'm, again, confident in the way that I dress, pairing those two together doesn't scare me. So, you know, I keep going back to this, but I think it's important to keep reiterating is be confident enough to push that to the edge. And, and if you're not, push yourself anyway. Mm, I love it. Push it anyway. I'm thinking too that that cross-referencing is a great way to feel like you have a whole lot more than what you may have. So it's like, oh, how many times have we walked in the closet and we're like, I don't have anything to wear. Now, we all have those moments. Monthly. <laughs> yes, monthly. <laughs> um, but I'm thinking, you know, it's about quality, not quantity. So you don't have to have like a shit ton of clothes to be able to carry yourself well in a lot of different scenarios. But if you have, you know, let's say 10 to 30 pieces total in your wardrobe, but you're always constantly pairing them differently. It's like you have 50 to 70 outfits. I, I was thinking more like 120. Okay. You know, and again, that's me pushing. Yeah. But um, I absolutely agree with that. You know, whether you have a lot of clothes or just a few pieces, it's really how you coordinate them together. And really, you know, pushing it to the edge is number one, but then being able to confidently execute what you're putting on. And that's in how you feel in it. So it's gonna be a little scary, right? To put that cheetah print shoe with that royal blue shirt. But how do you feel when you put it on? A little awkward at first, but when you really take a minute, take a minute to look at yourself in the mirror. Take a minute to look at yourself from another point of view. It's really yourself looking at yourself from another point of view. And just be that encouragement that you need as well. And then again, reference back to those, to those boards. I use Pinterest a lot. If you're like, oh, I have on this royal blue shirt with these cheetah print. I don't know what anybody's going to think of this. I don't feel so confident. Go back and look at those boards and see how confident those women are in that picture and how good they feel. Sometimes it's just a little boost of encouragement you may need to push yourself to the next level of style. Sometimes it comes natural, sometimes it doesn't, and that's okay. That's, it's completely okay. I'm thinking from a branding perspective again. Um, on average, would you say that there is like an average amount that men and women can expect to invest in clothing for photo shoots for business? Well, I think it depends on the business. I think it depends on your personal budget. But with all of those kind of like out of the picture for a second, I would say um, a good 500, a good 500. Um, and, that's, and that's kind of pushing it to the higher end. You could probably do something around 300. Um, how many outfits do you need? What do you need them for? How many poses will there be? A lot of things factor in. But I would say a good hearty budget would be $500. Now, that's where I work magic. With that $500, I can create 120 looks. Um, and I, I'm serious. If you don't believe me, just try it out. <laughs> but um, it's getting the staple pieces that you need, lining those up, and then adding those secondary pieces in. And that's really how I set up everybody for success because I'm thinking well beyond the photo shoot and I'm thinking how can you incorporate these new pieces, right, for your new brand into your new life and your new style. Oh, I love that so much. It's, I think that's uh, a roadblock sometimes people think, oh, well, I gotta buy the photo, I gotta hire the photographer and I gotta buy the clothes and I gotta do the this and it's a half a day and it starts to add up and can be really overwhelming. But again, reiterating that it's it's really an investment in you and it's it an investment in your business. And that the clothes you get to keep, the photos you get to use, the brand gets to grow, the business gets to, you know, the footprint gets to expand. Um, and those clothes that you're investing in or those pieces that you're investing in um, are, are part of an evolution of who you are as a brand. I was thinking back to earlier in the conversation when you were talking about some of my childhood memories. You know, one I didn't mention was, and it just kind of hit me, so this is great. Um, I've been styling people since middle school, and I didn't realize I was doing it at the time. But when someone said, Did the, do these polka dot stirrup pants look <laughs> right with this blouse? I'm like, yes, girl, or no, girl. 
you should put that with this. Um, so just to tie back into what you were saying, you know, we feel like we have to have all this money to do all of these things. And I think that if you strategically know what you're investing in, making it a priority to invest in yourself. $500 can seem like a lot to some or to somebody else it could seem like, oh, that's all you need. It's really a personal investment into evolving your style and understanding that without evolving your style, not only can your brand stay stagnant, but your personal style, the way that you feel, the way that you're making others feel can become very stagnant and dry too. Absolutely. What is a great place for people to start? So they're thinking, I'm sure that everyone's kind of going through their closet in their brain, or maybe they've got their earbuds in and they're looking at their shoes like, well, shoot, maybe I should wear those. What are some, some first steps, some, some bite-sized things that people can implement right away with what they have at home? So I would say the first thing is, uh, if you don't have organization within your closet, get it today. <laughs> um, and believe it or not, I am just now embracing that organization. Um, become organized. Line everything up. Color code everything. Because then you'll start to realize what you have more of, what you have less of, what you need. You mean the black t-shirt section of everyone's closet? Oh, yes. You know the one that's like half your closet? Yeah. Yeah. You can begin to incorporate color once you realize all the black that's in your closet. But first things first is um, organize. Organize. Lay everything out. What do you have? How many pieces do you have of what? Once you do that, you can see quickly what you want to get rid of, what you want to keep, what you might want to keep. And then Pinterest, I'm gonna go back to Pinterest again. Create a board for yourself. In fact, create two. One that is your current style and one of you pushing yourself to the edge. As you look at the one that's your current and then you look at the one that you want to evolve to, how are they similar and how are they different? Then you can start to develop a plan what do I need? How many of this do I need? Well, I think I want to push myself a little bit more to royal blue. So I have two pieces already. Would one more suffice? But I know I hate yellow and I have six yellow shirts. I'm going to give these away. Or I'm going to sell these to invest back into the royal blue. See how that works? Um, you know, and again, I'm very resourceful, so I'm just kind of giving you the advice on my end of things, but I've really developed a plan over the years that not only works for me, but I've been able to implement it into other people's lives as well. And I'm starting to receive the feedback from family and friends that are saying, oh my God, I didn't even realize I had all of this. Thank you so much. Now I was able to get rid of this and acquire this. So develop a plan, organize create and then make a list of what you need purchase those things only oftentimes we go to the store and go i love that oh i love that oh i love that i'm all about lists now make that list of what you need start there if you know that you can't afford everything on that list start with the main pieces that you want to incorporate now and then build on that again it's okay where you are and to build on top of it is okay too Rome wasn't built in a day. No, it was not. I think it's such a beautiful reminder that you don't have to flip the switch today, like right now. Like now I want to throw everything away and start over. Like these are perfect bite-sized pieces. Don't throw just... it away because I might want it. <laughs> <laughs> and taking, taking it to the consignment. Yes. And if that doesn't work, donating it, making sure that that fashion keeps going on. There's something um, great in, in donating as well because you're giving back um, it feels fulfilling. Um, and then you're able, you know, to really, again, see what you have, see what you need. There's something in seeing what other people need that you don't have or that you do have and you know that other people need it and you haven't worn it in 10 years. It's a beautiful message. Kristen, I'm curious, what does gutsy mean to you? Um, 
Gutsy means a lot of things to me, but in personal style, it truly means being a risk taker. It truly means being so confident in yourself that whether you're in all black or bright fuchsia or lime green or cheetah and zebra, that as long as you're confident about who you are, that nobody can take that power from you with your personal style. Being gutsy to me is all about being a risk taker and being standing in your power with that, standing in taking ownership of who you are and what your style is. I, I'm just, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. It's phenomenal stuff. This has been such a great conversation. Yes. And I think it's one that um, is going to get a lot of wheels turning and just really inspire creativity and, and individualism. So I'm curious, how can our guests find you? Um, yes, Kristen is available for personal <laughs> styling. Um, so I'm going to plug her there. But how else can people connect with you and maybe kind of watch your journey? Sure. Um, so I am Kristen Holt Works and Co. on Facebook. But there is a fashion page called Captivated Culture. And that is on Facebook, tied back to Works and Co., on that page, you will see fashion only. Um, again, these are trends more so that are individual. So I'm really big on not following trends, even though I pay attention to trends. I love the fall colors that are incorporated, but how do I push that to the edge? So you'll see a lot on there of myself, of the team here, of people that I am styling as this business is growing. Um, and then you'll see in each one of them, it's their own personal style. And that's what I love so much about the style page, that it's everyone's unique individual style. So if you're relating to something or relating to someone's personal style, take away their face for a second and look at what they have on and visualize yourself in that. And that's what you're relating to. So you can find me on Captivated Culture on Facebook, Kristen Holt Works & Co. if you'd like to book um, personal styling consultation. Um, but again, if you just want to follow the, the fashion trends that we're creating, um, you can do that on Captivated Culture. Awesome. And that's Captivated with a K. It is. Captivated with a K. Um, my name is Kristen with a K. <laughs> So it was just really catchy and, you know, I'm a risk taker. So who says you have to spell captivated with a C? Why not? We will definitely have links to Kristen in our show notes for sure. Kristen, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us. I know that it's definitely going to inspire um, more people than you realize to to really embrace their, their own personal style and try something new. Thank you for having me. And, you know, that's kind of the message that I'd really love people to know. Just be you. And if you don't know who that is, find out, explore. It doesn't matter if it takes a long time, a little bit of time, you know, try a few different things on, wear a few different colors. If it doesn't feel great, take it off. What, what's, what bad can come from it, honestly, at the end of the day? Why not? Yes. Amazing. Join me this Thursday as we take our power back by taking control of our time. Let's talk about the little red dot of death that distracts us from basically everything that we do in life. We're going to take our power back, guys. I'm going to talk to you about turning off those damn notifications. <laughs> Until then, follow the Gutsy Podcast on Facebook and Instagram. And for more Gutsy Insight, follow me personally at that Laura Aura. See you next time.